Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team. And in this video, we're gonna take a quick look at using CSS Grid to lay out your oxygen repeater elements. CSS Grid is a great way to get more finite control over the specific sizes and position of elements on a grid. And because Oxygen uses Flexbox, it's very, very easy to implement a grid layout right on top of what you build in Oxygen. So let's jump in and get started. Here I just have a page I quickly threw together with some shape dividers and a section in which I wanna put a repeater that shows a post list. So let's add a repeater and let's change the query to custom post type and we're gonna search for posts and we'll apply that. Now on the div itself, we're gonna set the background under advanced background click data, we're gonna set that to the featured image of each post. Set the background size to cover, left to 50% and top to 50%. Great, so we're off to a good start. We're going to go ahead and add some padding here, size and spacing under advanced, and let's add something like 16 pixels of padding. I would go a little bit more if I was keeping this kind of layout, but because our elements may be quite a bit smaller. I don't want everything to get squished. Now let's go to advanced borders and set the border radius to something like four pixels. And now we're gonna add an inner div which will contain all of our content like a title and author and things like that. So let's add a div and we'll set the background to white. And let's go to borders and set that border to uh, four pixels as well. And let's go to advanced effects and add a little bit of box shadow here. Set the shadow color to a rather dark color, all the way black, and then set this down to zero on horizontal and vertical offset. Do quite a bit of blur and then a negative spread like negative 10 pixels. That gives us a subtle drop shadow effect. And then advanced size and spacing, we're gonna set this to 100% width. Perfect. Now let's add some padding to this. Let's add another 16 pixels. And then we will add a heading. And we're going to insert the title. And then we're going to add a button. And we're going to make this a read more button. And Let's go ahead and set the color to this global blue that we have going on on the rest of the page. And then let's go ahead and center everything and reduce the size of this button a bit. We don't need it quite so large. Text size can go down a little bit. I like to go 16 pixels at a minimum. Actually, let's step that button size back up a little bit. And then let's go to the title and go to advanced typography and set the line height to 1.2 and advanced size and spacing and set the margin bottom to 16 pixels. So now we have a really basic post layout. You would probably want to add like an excerpt and some things like that. But since we're focusing on the actual grid layout, I'm not going to go through all that. So let's go ahead and save this before we jump in to our custom CSS. We're going to want to select the repeater element and grab the ID from up here at the top of the properties pane. And then we're gonna to wanna to go to manage style sheets and we're gonna add a style sheet and call this my grid. Great, now we need to drop in that ID with a hashtag here and set it to display grid. That's gonna set us up to go ahead and style everything. And I actually have a bit of CSS already prepared here I'm gonna grab this and drop it in, and that will give us a base to go off of, and I'll explain what each part does. So obviously we've set it to display grid. Then we have grid-template-columns. We're using a repeat here that says we want six columns with a minimum width of 100 pixels and a maximum width of one fraction of the width, so basically one sixth. So we're able to do this uh, with grid instead of using percentages like you normally would to achieve a column layout with Flexbox. Then for our gaps, we have grid row gap set to 16 pixels and grid column gap set to 16 pixels. And then grid auto rows just says 
basically don't ever let a row be smaller than the content of the grid elements and don't ever let it be larger than one fraction. So that gives us a nice dynamic row height that kind of adapts to what we have. Now, we initially see an issue here. First, I don't think I want six columns. So let's drop this number down to four. And then since some of these are gonna be pretty small, let's go in and let's reduce this font size a little bit on these titles. Let's just go to like 32 pixels. And then let's go back to our style sheet. And what we wanna do, and this is kind of the really cool part of CSS Grid, is we wanna style specific elements in the grid in specific ways. So we can target them with something called nth child. It's a special type of selector that allows you to target an element based on its index within a container. So we're gonna do underscore dynamic underscore list 294-2. And then we're gonna target divs, but only nth dash child, the first div. So we put a one in there, that's the first child. There's also a first dash child selector, but since we're focusing on nth child, I'm gonna stick with that. And so now we have some decisions to make. How big do we want this first post to be? We can make it smaller, we can make it bigger, we can make it whatever we want. Like for instance, if we want to make it span the entire width of the grid, we could say grid column span four, right? And then it goes ahead and spans four columns. But in this case, I don't think I want the first one to be that big, though you could go ahead and do grid row span three, or we could go span two, span one, etc. So if we did span two, that gives us a big kind of banner effect and that looks all right. Um, but in this case, I think I want to have it span two, but I also want it to only be two columns wide. That gives us that big uh, square effect. And then the ones after that, I actually like the way they look because they kind of stack up in the same amount of space this single post takes up and gives us that kind of four post square there. So that's perfect. So we'll stick with that. But then we want to style the posts that come after these first five. So we could go uh, underscore dynamic underscore list 294-2 div nth child in plus we want everything from the sixth child onwards. So we do n plus six. And then we can go ahead and set these to something like grid column span two, right? So now we see that they each span two columns. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's take a look on the front end and just see what it looks like. And as you can see, we get this really nice layout that's not super easy to achieve with Flexbox because we have some, some different styles here. And Let's go a little bit further. Let's say uh, maybe after these four posts here. So we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So on the 10th child, we want it to be a big full width banner. So let's go ahead and go back here and we'll use this same strategy here. So we'll copy and paste this ID to make it a little quicker. Div nth child and instead of one like we did at the top to target the first child we'll choose the tenth child by putting a 10 in there and then we'll do a grid column span four and then grid row span two okay and then that should give us actually i have a typo there let's fix that that should give us the effect that we want over here so let's go ahead and look on the front end Okay, so now as we scroll down, we see this first post, awesome. We have these four, then one, two, three, four, and then we have this big banner post. So this is the type of thing you can do with Grid, and there's really a lot of depth to Grid and the things you can do. It's almost limitless what you can do with CSS Grid when it comes to laying out elements according to a defined Grid. And it's really, really powerful to have this tool in your back pocket when you're doing a client build and they say, hey, can I make my post list look like this magazine site, right? It can be done with Flexbox to an extent, but the grid is gonna make you look like a complete wizard when you go ahead and just get the layout to look specifically how you want and the whole thing is dynamic. Our CSS doesn't care what the 10th post is. 
Just as long as it is the 10th post in this list, it will be styled that way. So these posts change out, but your grid always remains how you've coded it. Now there's a plugin called MicroThemer that gives you a visual way to style CSS grids. And actually they've added compatibility with Oxygen. So it works really well with Oxygen and gives you a more visual way to do CSS grid. But I do think it's important to understand the CSS behind it before you start getting into visually editing it with a tool because then you understand it a little bit better and that usually makes the tool make a little more sense. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team and that's how to use CSS Grid to lay out a repeater element in Oxygen. Thank you very much for watching.